Hello there. Uh, in the previous video, you saw how we use the pencil and the different kinds of strokes, how to hold the pencil and the pressure that we need to, uh, the different kinds of pressure gives you different effects. If you notice on the left part, there are a few blends that I have done. Uh, take your time to look at these blends and we will demonstrate in this video how to get the different blends. The topmost blend is called the layering, the burnishing, the saturation burnishing, tonal burnishing, solvent or in this uh, particular uh, swatch a watercolor wash, colorless blend and a shadow blend. Now I'm going to demonstrate how I am able to get these different kinds of blends. Now the most basic blend is the layering. If you remember, I asked you to hold the pencil a little away so you get the uh, light strokes. In this particular technique, we hold the pencil a little away and we start with the first color. We apply a light pressure because we have to layer more colors on it. The second layer goes over the lowermost layer with a little more pressure. Then comes the third layer. where you slowly blend in the color. In the end, you go over all the three layers with the base color. So this is the layering technique, technique that is what uh, that gives this effect. It's very beautifully used in for skin tones, for still life drawings, to get some kind of realism in your works. The next technique that I'm going to cover is the burnishing. Burnishing is nothing but the next level of layering. And the pressure used is a little more than the basic layering technique. We start with the first layer. We apply a little more pressure. Apply the second layer. And then we apply the third layer. In this technique, you have to go, you have to repeat this whole step a couple of times so you are able to get that exact shiny waxy layer on top. If you notice, the grains of the paper are seen lesser than the earlier layering technique. The third technique that we are doing is called the saturation burnishing. The burnishing technique is also used to show a lot of um, uh, realism in your work, to give a shine to your work. It's very good to do nature uh, um, subjects in this particular technique. The saturation burnishing is also used for a lot of skin tones. Uh, the only difference in this is when you are layering the colors, you use the first layering technique for blending in the colors. And then you use a neutral color like an ochre or a burnt sienna. Ochre is preferred and you blend your colors. This, te this technique is basically used for skin tones. This technique is called the tonal burnishing technique. I'm going to pick four shades of turquoise, 
start with the lighter shade overlap the lighter shade with the medium shade and then overlap the medium shade with the darker shade I then take the lighter shade and go over all the layers to get a tonal variation. As these are water pen watercolor pencils, we also can use water to smudge them to get a watercolor effect. There are also some solvents available in the market for you to able to spread the colors. For a watercolor wash, you need to make sure that you do not put too much pressure on your pencils. Make sure the, the, uh, the pressure on your pencils is even lesser than the layering that we initially told you. Load your brush with water. Start with the lightest tone. Move from light to dark and blend the colors together. The next blend that we are going to do is the colorless blend. The colorless blend is exactly what it means. We, we first, sorry, we first do the layering technique. We add in the layers and we use a colorless pencil to blend or a white pencil here to blend. So this is the white pencil I'm using. What the white pencil does is it pushes the color onto the texture of the paper and gives a smooth pastel look to it. The next uh, uh, blend is the shadow blend. Basically to show how to get the shadow effects on all the colors. You start with the lightest tone. If you notice there's a white patch over here which indicates that there's a light source over here and there's a brown patch over here to show that's where the form shadow is. So we start by leaving the white portion to sh indicate the light. and we do the first layer we move on to the second layer leaving a portion of the first layer and then to the third layer We add a neutral color, an umber, to the portion. To indicate shadow, we make sure that we softly blend in the brown with very minimum pressure. And then we overlay the brown with the color of the lower layers. So I hope the different kinds of blends are clear to you. We now will in the next video demonstrate how to show highlights and shadows.